Well, it's very likely that your church supports many missionaries around the world, and possibly you've met them, but have you ever wondered what it's like to be in their shoes, to actually pack up, to go, to go to another location that God is sending, and then spread the gospel? We're going to introduce you to a family who did just that, the Hall family, missionaries to Albania. Thanks for taking some time to stop here in Lima, Ohio, as you are here on furlough. Let's just jump right in and tell me a little bit about your ministry in Albania. Well, we started uh, about two years ago, and we helped to establish a private school, the first private school in the area of Albania where we are, which is the northern mountain region, which is pretty isolated from, from the more, uh, the big city of the capital. And so we spent two years working on that, on establishing that school. And, and now we're transitioning into working directly with the church to help with the more of the discipleship process and uh, reaching out to the community there. Don, what are some of the needs that you recognize exist among the people in Albania? The country of Albania was under communism for what, 50 plus years, very strict. And one of the things that we, it's a very top down uh, mentality. They're used to being told what to do by the person in authority and doing it. And I had a young woman say to me a couple weeks ago, you know, I'm valuable as an, as an individual. I have opinions and they're not used to being treated with dignity and worth and that's and that's huge for them that whole uh, being part of a team and not just having to do what they're told because who knows what might happen if they don't mission work um, for us in the united states who don't go who aren't a part mm -hmm. of it it can be easier for us to just think well you just go over there and you spend every day telling people <laughs> about jesus and that's what you do and it all works out or even if it doesn't work out <laughs> it does in the end but god's plan sometimes is a little different um, no. Sharing the gospel isn't, it, it has different ways that it presents yeah. itself, is sure, that correct? Sure, that's true. Yeah, we, we found it's, it's uh, never exactly what you expect. <laughs> We've heard that from many others and we experienced the same ourselves. Um, but uh, yes, it's definitely the, the daily living that we just do what we do as people first. And that's different in many ways than they live there. But uh, it's, it's a lot of work just to live in a, in a foreign culture. And so, yeah, we're not on the streets preaching the gospel every day. We're, we're meeting people, developing relationships, and uh, uh, teaching children, and uh, getting the, in ourselves in a position where we can share the gospel. Now, there are couples who, you know, the moment they get married, they know they're going to be on the mission field. And I think, Don, you did grow up the mm -hmm, mission field mm -hmm. somewhat, yeah. but uh, you guys were here in the United States, established in mm -hmm. the United States, yeah. six kids, mm -hmm. but then just a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. God said, go. Right. You are an established yeah. family, you've got adult children, you've got young children, and you basically sold everything. So before we get talking about that, <laughs> I want you at home to think, you know, if God, if you think God's calling you to something, but you are just not sure, how could I do this? This is crazy. Um, this is going to totally change my whole life, upset all the apples in the cart. But when God is saying, go, you've got to go. And that's what you experienced a few years ago. Right. Take us back to that point. Well, we had um, both been teachers in Christian schools, and I was a t uh, Christian school administrator for eight years as well. Um, but uh, for the previous seven years, I was working in the financial world, financial planning with, uh, for personal finance, and had met a client who was a successful businessman who uh, we had some business to take care of, and he was pretty you know, business-like, I guess, about that. And then when we finished that, he said, but let me tell you what really excites me. And he lit up and he got his cell phone out and started showing me pictures of many of the projects that they had been involved in. Um, and in China, Bulgaria, Albania, and others in mostly short-term missions. And he shared a need they were, were looking at to start a Christian school or at least a private school in this region of Albania and wanted a couple who had experience in both education and administration and to go over there and to help start the school. Now he had no idea that, that that was us or at least could be us because we had experience in education. He only knew me as his financial advisor. So I was feeling the kind of, maybe, maybe it's you Dan, maybe it's you and, uh, and told Don about it and we talked and prayed and then went back to him and said, by the way, and shared a little bit of our background. So we visited with them for a couple of days and talked and talked and talked about possibilities and then went to visit Albania for about a week to check out this little town in the mountains of Peshkopi, Albania. 
And uh, God really spoke to us in the sense that we prayed, please show us clearly either yes or absolutely <laughs> no. And a little selfish prayer because we want God's guidance to be clear. But it became very clear that this is what we were supposed to do. So, How was that for you, Don? I mean, you, you sold your possessions. Mm -hmm. You didn't sell your house, but you sold your possessions mm -hmm. and you prepared to leave your four adult children, <laughs> one just graduating from high school here in the United States. Mm -hmm. Well, when he first called and told me about this, I was like, this is crazy. We're, I was, we were running a homeschool athletic association. We were gearing up for basketball season. I was like, we don't have time for this. And it wasn't like we had, we were looking to see where is God going to send us on the mission field. We, it wasn't that at all. But I could tell that it was really God particularly working on his heart. And it just seemed like it was the right thing. There was just thing after thing that happened. Our adult kids were very supportive of it. They're like, of course, you should go if that's what God wants you to do. Um, our younger kids were not adverse to it, which kind of surprised us. Our son Isaac especially, we thought maybe he would say, what do I want to do that for? But he kind of saw it as an adventure. Um, oh, just little things like, you know, as a mom, you worry about your kids. And as Americans, you know, our, teeth, our kids' teeth need to be straight. And Elizabeth needed orthodontic work. But the, the receptionist at the orthodontic office, when we went to consult, she said, you know what, Dawn, if God's calling you to do this, you need to do it. It doesn't matter if your daughter's teeth are straight. This is from an American <laughs> orthodontist, you know. And so there were just little things along the way that just reminded us. And as we said, in the scope of God's kingdom, as Americans, we get concerned about things that really don't matter. If one person comes to know the Lord and have eternal life, it, it's worth it. And so it was a gradual process. Um, it was neat to be able to give, transfer our things to people in the U.S. that they could bless, you know, mm -hmm. educational materials to families I knew were on a tight budget. And so to to be able to give them something at a good cost. And um, actually, when we go back home and visit, we visit our stuff, too, because uh -huh. our friends have different pieces of furniture that they bought from us. And so it's kind of neat, too. So you're now over two years in. Right. You're home for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. You're visiting children. But then you're heading back. Yes. Mm -hmm. you're, you're still on this mission that God has called yeah. you to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling about that at this point? <laughs> well, it's, uh, we're in a bit of a transition right now going from the school to working directly with the church. So there's a lot of, a lot of uh, unanswered questions. And so we're sort of reestablishing our role right now, uh, which is very exciting because we'll be working much more directly now with uh, adults and families that the church connects with and, uh, and getting a chance to do more teaching of, of in a church setting rather than only in an academic yeah. setting. So looking forward to that kind of we're excited it's it seems like every time we turn around these days God's got has a new thing he's having us walk into maybe every two years I don't know that's what it appears to be but. well and, and many people have told us that you know we have our plans but then God sometimes has something else and it's mm -hmm. kind of exciting to see what God's doing it maybe isn't anything that we even dreamed about he just had to get us there and now he'll figure out what he wants us to do there for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. So recognizing you're in a period of time where God has called you to Albania. Other people aren't necessarily called to Albania, but right. God's called everybody somewhere. Right. And saying yes to that can be fearful, especially mm -hmm. if it involves, like you said, changing your family dynamic, mm -hmm. all of these elements. What would you say to people at home if they're sitting there saying, I, I know God wants me to do this next thing, but I'm scared or I'm, right. I don't know what to do. What kind of encouragement can you give them? Mm -hmm. Well, we spoke at a church uh, briefly, uh, one that's uh, supportive of us, and it came to me as I was about to go up and say something mm. to say, you know, it's really good to be here, and it's also really good to be in Albania. It's really good to be where God has you, mm. and I think there's a sense if you have that, um, that calling on your life to be where God wants you to be, yeah, there's going to be apprehension, maybe even a little fear. But um, God provides both the emotional energy and, and uh, confidence that he, uh, to do what he's called you to do. And we've seen that over and over, moving originally from California to Missouri, Missouri to Albania. You know, it's, that's like three different countries, kind of. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's been challenging at times, but uh, he provides. And we're, we're encouraging of people to be confident where you are, where God has you, but be open to being called somewhere else. Well, finally, how can we be supporting you? How can we pray for you? Do you collect, do you raise support? What can we do for you? 
Well, do uh, you want to? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, <coughs> we've been very blessed financially. One of the advantages to going to the mission field as older people is that we have a pretty broad network of friends and family. And so it's really actually kind of exciting to watch how God's um, raised financial support for us and other support, but from a real variety of people. Um, Many of the people that are supporting us are not people that we would have said, oh, we should contact them. They'll give us money. Um, people that we knew but never in 100 years would have dreamed that they would have su supported us financially. So uh, we work through an organization called Perception Funding, um, which is, is a neat organization because it serves missionaries. It's a ministry that serves missionaries and other nonprofits and things like that to help them raise money and to see uh, fundraising is part of mission, not just some ugly thing we have to do, but that's part of it. And I, I think that's true. People in the U.S., not everybody can go. That's not what God's called all of us to do. But um, people can sometimes give financially, and if they can't, they can pray. Um, it is tremendously encouraging to know that people know us and are praying for us. We went to this church, and Dan spoke, and afterwards I said, you didn't even introduce us and in what we're doing. And only about half the people know us, you know, you, we kind of, you kind of forget that. And afterwards, we are talking to a young man who we didn't know, and he goes, oh, everybody knows who you are and what you're, we're doing because we pray for you. Mm -hmm. That is Means so encouraging, you know, and of course, they're not going to know us intimately, but just that showed us they really are praying for us. They're naming us by name. They're talking about at least generally what we're doing. So uh, of, always, of course, finances, but prayer and encouragement like that are, mean a lot. All right. Thank you very much, Dan and Don Hall, missionaries to Albania. Thank you for sharing your story here on TV44's Faith and Friends. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks. For encourage you to add Dan and Don and their children, Isaac and Elizabeth, to your prayer list. Be praying for them regularly. They are serving God in Albania. They are reaching a people group who need to feel that loving relationship that only Jesus can provide. Pray for the opportunities, the open doors that they have to form those relationships and that they continue to stand on the path that God has for them. And if you'd like to find out more on how to support them or just how to connect with them, you can always call us here at TV44 to ask for me and I'll make sure that we make those connections for you.